when you start third year, you have certain expectations academically and personally. Um, and one thing to realize is that there really is a hierarchy and you're not supposed to be the best attending and you're not supposed to be the best resident. You're supposed to be the best medical student that you can be. As a third year, you're not necessarily going to be the most direct person taking care of the patient, but there are lots of other things that you can do really well. You have a lot of time that other people on the team don't have, and so important qualities like empathy that come in in terms of being a, a physician are really sort of honed, I think, during a third year where you could sit with a patient and really talk to them about their illness. There's actually been a few times as a third year where I've gone back and you know, asked my patient, did you understand what we talked about today in rounds? and they just look at you, they have absolutely no idea, even though we spent 15, 20 minutes in there. So really, um, communication is, is important, and uh, also communication at a level of understanding, because especially in the Bronx, we have patients from all different socioeconomic and educational backgrounds. So really getting to know patients, what they understand, and making sure they understand it is something that I think patients really appreciate. You know, medicine is so much more of an art than a science at the end of the day. Because if, if you can't communicate and you can't bridge that storytelling space, you know, both you telling the story to the patient and explaining things to them, but also getting their story accurately and, you know, and what, what they're, you know, about and the history is just so significant. If you can't get that information, then it, all the tests in the world will, will do nothing. To act as liaisons between um, not only the medical team, but all of the um, uh, hospital care providers, uh, to talk to the, the patient's social worker, to talk to the nutritionist, to talk to the physical therapist, and that not only will help um, the patient get better care, but it will also make you look good if you can come to rounds knowing uh, what the social worker has done or what the physical therapist recommends. As a third year, I w there was one particular patient who I absolutely adored. I spent you know almost an hour every day in his room just getting to know him. and. Over the course of a few weeks, he had, you know, a history of CLL, and over the course of a few weeks, I noticed he wasn't quite able to finish his sentences without getting out of breath, and he, he had this cough that was really progressing, and I said something to the resident, you know, I mean, just, I can spend more time with him, and I'm noticing these changes, and they ended up, you know, doing a, a chest x-ray and finding some metastases and things like that, and it was something that was picked up just on, you know, spending time with this patient and, and watching their progression. When you go and speak with somebody who has just been given a diagnosis that is a very grave one, uh, seeing how they, how they deal with it and how they handle it. Um, to us, they may be words, they may be diagnoses, they may be things that we study, uh, things that we read in books, and things that we have to make sure that we get correct. But to them, it's, it's the diagnosis that they carry for the rest of their lives. Um, and it might be the last diagnosis that they carry. Um, so in seeing these patients, react to that news, take that news, digest that news, and ask you what the next step is while you're standing in front of them uh, is sort of an amazing thing. This is one, one of the only professions, I think, that you get a stranger coming off of the street and asking you for your help. Um, and I think, in general, it's, if I could describe it in one word, it'd just be extremely humbling.